The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. In this episode of Postcards. I, I consider myself to be a prairie artist because that's where I live and that's where I've always lived. I've never traveled anywhere else and I just only paint what's here. Very few people crawl around on the lawn in the morning, but the truth is that it is surprising what one can learn. Inks I love because of their the colors. The inks sort of lead you into what you end up painting. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. What does it mean to be a prairie artist? Della Conroy tells us about her experiences in the art world and shows us around her studio. I've lived in Hancock since I got married, about 43 years ago. And before that, I lived in Alberta, Minnesota, which is just down the road. I, I consider myself to be a prairie artist because that's where I live, and that's where I've always lived. I've never traveled anywhere else, and I just only paint what's here. I was very happy to be chosen to, to display in Horizontal Grandeur because it's a great honor, especially since it's right here in my, my, in my home, you know. It's nice to be part of the show. Horizontal Grandeur is a show that's put on by the Historical Museum in Morris. And it's based on a poem by Bill Holm, who was a Minnesota um, poet. And it tells about all the beauty that's on the prairie. And people who live in a, one of the prairie states, or, or who have a little prairie in their state, can enter the show. And so people from all over the country enter this show. It's just a wonderful show. Well, I have an art studio, and that's where we're sitting right now. And um, I got it about five years ago when the, when the residents decided to sell it. And it used to be a carriage house for the Erickson home next door. And so now it's um, an art house. <laughs> My bird has been really quiet now, but he's flying around here somewhere. I think he went back in his cage. Nope, he's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> That's his favorite pastime. He keeps me company. Well, I use watercolor. Well, I started out in oil when I was a kid, and I do that some. And I use watercolor, pastel, acrylic, oil pastel, collage, everything I can get my hands on. I'll do pastel for a while and then get tired of it and do something else for a while. So I like to switch out. And then some, some subjects call for a different media, you know. Like something new that I'm doing is watercolor on Yupo, which is a plastic paper. And so the watercolor doesn't soak into the paper. It sits on top and you get all kinds of cool effects. And I love doing that. Prairie really inspires me because um, there's so much variety in the seasons and the colors and just subtle beauty. I do take photos when I'm out. I try to um, paint an expression of what I felt when I was there. Right now I'm painting four seasons in preparation for a show I'm doing at the Wilmer Area Arts Council. 
in um, August. And so I'm, paint, I'm trying to paint four seasons in every medium. <laughs> Well, I'm doing this pastel painting, and I usually um, uh, find a frame, because I've got lots of frames, and people give me a lot of frames, and I try to do something that goes with that frame, size-wise, mood-wise. And so I thought a little moody Page Lake scene would be good with this frame, and pastel is perfect for a foggy day. So I'm going to try and paint fog. So I just keep going like this, and a pastel painting doesn't take very long. And I love pastel because you can change your mind, correct mistakes. I, I could just wipe this whole thing off with a brush and start over if I wanted to. Watercolor, different story. Once you put the paint on the paper, there it is. You can't really get it off. But this is so fast. It just takes no time at all. Doesn't it look fun? Mm -hmm. It's fun when everything's going right. <laughs> See how easy it is to make grass? and Anybody can do this. There's just absolutely nothing to it. Helps to have a teacher so you can get started. And then as soon as you gain your confidence, you can just take off. My friend and I just started um, something called Panache, and it's, it involves teaching art classes. We taught a class for children this summer, and we had 23 little kids who came here in three sessions. And we had art, we had music, and we had food. <laughs> And right now I'm teaching a class, a beginner's watercolor class for adults, and we're doing the same thing. We are all born with the same talent. And talent isn't a gift that, that only certain people have. We all have it. Talent means ability or power. And we all have the same abilities or powers. And the, the thing that separates us as individuals is that we take a different interest in things. You know, some people aren't interested in drawing and painting. They're interested in shooting baskets. As a result, they're going to get very, very good at that. And people call that, mistakenly call that talent. No, it's practice. So I hope people realize that they can do, if they want to paint, they can. If they want to sing, they can. Everybody, we can all do these things. It's just another form of expression. Enjoying the show? Visit Pioneer.org for more information on postcards and other Pioneer productions. Professor and physicist Silke Boyd combines her passion for science and art to create breathtaking photographs of weather and nature. And see, this is the, the kind of picture that I do like because very few people crawl around on the lawn in the morning. But the truth is that it is surprising what one can learn. My name is Soka Boyd. I'm a scientist. <laughs> I am definitely a scientist. I have a vivid interest in atmosphere and weather. And uh, one of the ways to really get into a subject matter is to take pictures, is to paint, is to observe daily. I did weather reports for the Star Tribune for a while, neighborhood weather reports, which required a picture of weather. And that basically challenged me to capture in a picture conditions that a person who isn't here cannot experience. And that was actually kind of fun. So after this program with the newspaper sort of ended, I kept on doing that. So I'm taking a daily picture of weather. But it has expanded way beyond, beyond weather. Because I like the challenge. I never know what it's going to be in the morning. And I cannot really look for it. It surprises me every day. Oh, wow, I missed it. I almost got that bee. That might have been my surprise shot today. <laughs> when you pay attention to where the shadow goes, you can get a nice backlighting on the, on the flower, which in a macro shot can show 
some really nice structure. And so I try to use perspectives that are unusual, zooming in, using macro photography and these kinds of things to, to make it interesting, to make it memorable. Right there, for example. And really anybody could do this and then you observe this dewdrop. Sometimes you have to play a little bit with the angle because there are angles in which the dewdrop will appear brilliant and others in which it just refracts light away. And how to take a good photograph? It's actually <laughs> strange. I have photos that I've basically shot out of the hip. They turned out very, very nice. And I have photos that I've waited for for several minutes to get just the right light and the right angle. So it, it really depends. <laughs> but I've noticed that if I actually actively seek a motive, I'm less successful than if I just shoot. <laughs> hey, Berksy. And then there are challenges like dogs who think they must be in every picture. When I take my pictures, I cannot say I'm going actually out to take pictures. Uh, my life is pretty busy, but I always have a camera with me. I like to take my children, in particular my daughter and my dog, out for longer walks outside. Simply it increases the chance that I see a view that I like, that could me be my daily picture. <laughs> One of my favorite ones is actually this tree lady. It's a children's song. Once there was a dandy lady who loved to dance, they say. She had beautiful hair of gold and loved to dance all day. As time passed by and she grew old, her hair all turned to gray. Now when the dandy lady dances, her hair all blows away. The after-dinner sprint to the playground shelter was compensated by this breathtaking display of supernumerary rainbows or stack of rainbows. The five to six weaker inner color bands are generated by interference in a very homogeneous rain field, a rare sight and one that was important in understanding the wave nature of light, a physicist's delight in other words. Science and art are two ways to look at the world. Um, science comes more from a measurable standpoint, observation with a conscious plan, while art would perhaps try to understand the world more from a hmm, emotional point of view. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Yes, ask my family. They will, say, they will tell you that I'm obsessed. Because it is actually amazing um, how often we don't pay attention. And what the photos have done for me is they have sharpened my eye for phenomena that we sometimes might not even see, like halos or light pillars or auroras. So, when I post these pictures and I say, hey, did you see these sun pillars this morning in the blowing snow? Then people are always amazed. Wow, this was great, and I saw it too. So that makes me kind of happy. I live in the prairie. It is the environment that's around me. And as such, that's where I find my motives. Therefore, I'm a prairie artist. I'm in the prairie. <laughs> I actually, the idea to submit something to the exhibition was coming from friends. So friends saying to me, your pictures are really great. You should submit to this exhibition. And so I did submit a few pictures that I thought would follow the prairie theme. And I was lucky enough to be accepted with two pictures. So oftentimes it also helps to just experiment. So I'm asked where I even find the time for that. The truth is, maybe I'll use five minutes a day to do that. But 
it's sort of an escape. <laughs> it's something completely different from the normal running around, teaching, <laughs> trying to get everything done type of thing. And it doesn't take that long to take a couple of pictures. Do you have an idea for the postcards team? Email us, postcards at pioneer.org. Mary Jo Wentz demonstrates the unique qualities of alcohol ink paints and crafted fiber baskets at her studio in Battle Lake. I think I have always been somewhat of an artist because I grew up learning to sew and with that sewing ability, first I created clothes, of course, uh, and then various things. I learned how to weave, knit, crochet, um, and do things like embroidery and needlepoint and cross stitch. So that was my first foray into art. You know, I think art is really an expression of the self. And I think more of us are artists than we, we may realize. It's just getting that opportunity. To, to use art to express, and I think it's um, kind of a matter of exploring and experimenting to find out what you do like in art. For me, you know, I sort of keep that fiber or that organic quality and of the fibers, and I also pour that into my painting. I find that that's the one word that I attribute to my paintings that seems to match, that they're organic. Then when I retired, it, I took one art workshop that was in uh, alcohol inks and painting with alcohol inks. Painting was something I'd always enjoyed with my students, just watercolor painting and painting with tempera. But when I experienced the alcohol inks, I really liked the chemistry involved there. And I thought, boy, that's, that is for me. Inks I love because of their, the colors and the chemistry, like I said, that's involved, you sort of get left with a surprise. The inks sort of lead you into what you end up painting. I have an exhibit currently that is going on at the Evansville Art Center. It's exclusively mine. Color seems to draw people in, and that's the comment I've heard from Evansville Art Center. Then I also do fiber art bowls, and I have an exhibit there of my fiber art bowls as well. The exhibit has generated a lot of interest, uh, not just in me or not just in Evansville, but the art of painting with inks and the art of using fibers to create bowls. This is one of my favorite paintings. Um, I love green. There's an inlet that runs into Blanche Lake. We kayak there and this just really reminds me of the lily pad pond where a uh, kind of midsummer is just packed with lily pads and leaves. For this I only used one color of green but it's the the ink that works in with each other and then you work with the rubbing alcohol to re begin removing color. I usually don't name uh, my paintings. Um, and the reason I don't name my paintings is because sometimes I think that leads the viewer to a certain direction where I would rather have the viewer just look at it from the direction they want to. Um, a friend of mine said, well, this really reminds me of tulips. But in my mind, when I saw it, it reminded me of flowering cactus. So uh, when we lived out near Joshua Tree National Park, this is something that we saw a lot of. But I don't want the viewer to necessarily think what I think. I want them to appreciate it for, from their point of view. Being chosen for horizontal grandeur was really an honor, but I really did not expect to have any of my art chosen. Uh, and as it turned out then, two of the three pieces that I entered were chosen to be in horizontal grandeur. And it is a, a fascinating exhibit 
Um, I learned a lot about prairies as well because I didn't know that there were 19 states that had prairie. I paint using, most of the time, using UPO paper. And it is non-porous so that your inks won't go through it. And um, just to show you a little bit about what the inks do, um, so they're, they're very concentrated and there's a drop, but you can see that once it touches the UPO paper, it begins to almost, the color begins to almost break apart. And then if you use another color just to look at what happens when, sometimes the colors will do that, they'll kind of blend, and sometimes they fight each other. One quality I like about the, the inks is, let's pretend like I had just painted this and it's something that I don't like. I can take a paper towel, and, and a lot of my paintings actually start like this. And I can get my paper towel wet with the rubbing alcohol, and I can start, it'll lift that, the inks that are already there, but it also, as you can see, kind of begins to create, it leaves some color, so it creates like a background. Something else that I've worked on First I did a background here, and then I went in and I painted my flower just over and over with these kinds of strokes to the point where I'm layering on my ink. Then I came back in and I dipped my brush in rub just plain old rubbing alcohol, and it, once you start putting pools of this, let's see, where's a good place? Um, here. Now you can see what starts happening to the color. And this is, again, sometimes it's a surprise. Sometimes it's something that I think, oh, I don't like that at all. I can always work with color to get it to change. I can always erase it. And you begin to move that color around. You have to be willing to be patient and allow the inks to do their job. To make a fiber bowl, I start with a water-soluble fabric stabilizer. And it is kind of like plastic is what it feels like, except that it's going to dissolve in water. And then I just take my fiber, could be yarn, could be a thread of some sort, sometimes I throw gold thread into it, and I just start, I know that around the rim I'm going to need to have some sort of form. So I just usually start with a circle or an oval, and then I just take my fiber, and sometimes I use raffia also, that makes a neat bowl, and I just start layering it over and over. Then I cut it, I fold it over because I need the fabric stabilizer on top and underneath of my fiber. Then I'll take my pins because I need to stabilize this. So I'll pin it all the way around until I've got it stabilized. Then I need to take it over to my sewing machine and I just sew uh, kind of like a, what I think of as a spider web, but I just sew crisscross lines, and this is to stabilize my yarns. And then I'll put this in a sink full of water. The fabric stabilizer dissolves. The yarns are still held together even when they're wet, and that's what I want. Whatever bowl I use that becomes my mold, I'll want to cover that with like a plastic wrap. Then I would lay this in my bowl of water, my pan of water, until this fabric stabilizer dissolves. Because when it dissolves, it's going to leave kind of like a glue or what looks to be a little shiny substance on this, and that holds all of the yarns together. And then I'll, I would take it out of the sink full of water, 
drape it over my bowl and it takes about 24 hours to dry and harden and so it would come out like this and then I would take that off the bowl and I remove the saran wrap or the plastic wrap from the bowl and then it's done. At Good Samaritan Society in Battle Lake, um, my husband and I go in twice a month. One time is to uh, meet with residents who want to uh, come to the class and paint with watercolors. Some of them uh, have uh, physical disabilities like you know really pronounced arthritis that may make it whole, hard for them to hold a brush but they love to engage in art. The other class that we teach is on the alcohol inks. It's a smaller class but it's fun and it's really fun to see where their art takes them. And it's just it is a joy to work with them and we love going in every month. It's just what we learn from the residents as we work with them is just uh, it just can't be matched. It's just very enjoyable. My husband and I raised two children. Uh, they are both artistic in their own sense, but in a very different way than I am. I like to see that they can pursue their own artistic interests. And I think I, as an artist, I get inspiration from them and what they are open to and what they can do. But I just think life is fun and art is a good way to show it. Have you missed a show you'd like to see? Pioneer On Demand has all of your favorite productions available to watch online at your convenience, including past episodes of postcards. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yako Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. ExploreAlex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave.